Peace and greetings, peace and greetings from Brother Divine. Hello, I know you guys can't see me, uh, but we're doing something special today. You know, we changed the theme up a little bit for the show, Life as an Entrepreneur. This is actually day 13 and it's a Monday. So today's theme is actually Manifest Monday. And uh, with Manifest Mondays, what I want to pretty much do is I want to do how-to videos. Um, one of my events I was uh, I was vending at or whatnot, uh, a lady and her daughter came up and they were looking at my jewelry and stuff like that um, and just, you know, inquiring stuff. We were just talking and uh, the lady was telling me that her daughter is actually interested in, uh, you know, making jewelry or whatnot. So, you know, I was giving her a couple uh, tips, you know, uh, that I've learned uh, on my journey as far as making jewelry and things of that nature. So, um but I, I, what I was telling her, you know, because we were talking about it, I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm really thinking about starting to do like uh, how to videos on some of the products uh, that I make and create for the for the shop of Culture Shock LLC. And uh, so, yeah, this is pretty much what we're going to do uh, on this Monday. And uh, so you're not going to see me today, today guys. I'm kind of glad because I'm looking real, real raggedy right now. So but uh, I want to, you know. Do this one. Uh, the first tutorial I want to do, uh, I'm going to teach you guys how to make a netted crystal necklace. Uh, I figured it'll be something really, really easy to start off with for uh, you know beginners or whatnot. Uh, it's a real quick, quick uh, little creation that you can make some nice money off of. You know, uh, and like I said, it's, it's it really doesn't cost a lot to make. You don't really need a lot of components, uh, as you see here. And the reason I'm doing this also is because the last uh, event I was at, it rained and it rained really, really bad. So some of my jewelry got wet and it ruined a lot of the pieces, not a lot of my pieces, uh, a couple of them, especially these netted uh, crystal necklaces or whatnot. So this is why another reason why I'm doing this, just taking the opportunity to, since I have to recreate these pieces or whatnot, to actually show you how to create some of these pieces or whatnot. So. Like I said, I wanted this. I decided to do this one right here, and pretty much all of the components that you're going to need, um, you're going to need some split rings. I rather use split rings on these than jump rings. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more on the sturdier side or whatnot. Uh, as you see, I have like silver, uh, copper color, uh, copper coated uh, split rings, and I chose for the closure. I chose the lobster clasps. Now you can choose any type of clasps. You want to choose, uh, you know, you have the barrel clasps, you would have the hook clasps, you have the S clasps. Um, it's all type of clasps you can clasps that you can use or whatnot. So, like I said, I'm going to use a lobster clasps. Uh, also, you're going to need um, these right here. These are like cord crimps, pretty much. And uh, what they do is they secure your cord or whatnot. Um, you know, whatever type of cording you do, you have these crimp cords and it just gives you a component where it has that hole on the end and you can put like split rings or jump rings to actually connect your piece to your closure or whatnot. So you're going to need uh, two of those. Then, of course, the main thing, the uh, part that we're going to actually use to make the net, we have our actual cording. So today I decided to use nylon cording. Um, I like nylon because it uh, it doesn't fray like the hemp cord. I know a lot of people like to use the hemp cord or whatnot. I really don't like it because after a while, it'll start unraveling on you or whatnot. And uh, it just looks kind of tacky to me. So I really like using nylon cord. And then also on certain pieces, when you get into like more uh, advanced macrame, you uh, it's easier to melt the ends or whatnot because it's a nylon. So that actually like bead up or whatnot. And uh you know, cotton cord or hemp cord, it doesn't do that. It'll just, you know, pretty much just burn on the end. So it kind of adds to the uh, the sturdiness of the piece of whatever you're creating. So like I said, I'm using nylon cord and you're going to need um, four cords. And uh, this is just for the net and they should be like 36 inches in length, uh, each one of the cords. And like I said, you're going to need four cords to create this piece to actually create the uh, the netted part of the uh, of this piece that we're making this netted uh, crystal necklace or whatnot, and of course the main attraction you're gonna need a crystal. That's why you see I have the purple core because I chose to use this beautiful beautiful amethyst point right here, and it is gorgeous, super gorgeous. I really love it. 
Okay, so, and um, also the only tools that you'll need to create this piece as well is you'll need some uh, cutters, or you can use some scissors or whatnot. Excuse my cutters, they're kind of brown. Like I said, I was in a whole monsoon of a rainstorm <laughs> last Saturday. Uh, well, the Saturday before last down here when I was at Low Mill and it rained on a lot of my stuff. So, and um, so you're going to need some cutters or like some scissors to, uh, you know, cut off um, access cord or whatnot. Because I said 36 inches, but it's going to give you well over what you're really going to need. Uh, so you're going to have a little access string or whatnot to cut off. So you're going to need that. And also some needle nose pliers. Uh, these are really, really clutch and jewelry making. Uh, you should always have a good pair of, uh, of uh, needle nose pliers and cutters and round nose pliers and things of that nature. Uh, these are pretty much the pair that I, uh, when I got into this craft, the actual very first pair, so I'm still rocking with these right here. You can get these at any Michaels or Joann's or, you know, you can look on the internet on Amazon or eBay and things of that nature. So, all right. And also you're going to need, uh, I might as well go ahead and show you this. I kind of got started on it already. Uh, this part right here, let me show you guys. Uh, this is the other cords I'm going to use and this is the cord I'm going to use for the actual necklace now you're going to need three of these because what we're going to do is we're going to braid these uh, and make it a braided necklace so you're going to need three cords nylon cord um, you're going to need at least 48 inches of, uh, of length and like I say I always like to go over just to make sure you know I'm, I have enough thread or whatnot and uh, I just don't have a, cause I've used to do that, especially when starting on this piece, I wouldn't put in enough core and it would just mess up my piece. So this would just help you, you know, um, getting the right length of the necklace or whatnot. Um, for these necklaces, I like to have them, I like to make these like a 16 inch uh, necklace or whatnot. Sometimes 18, it really depends or whatnot. So as you see, um, you have those, uh, that's that crimp core, and you see I crimped the cords or whatnot, so they're secure. And I uh, got my one of my split rings on, well, both actually both of them on, <coughs> excuse me. And I have my uh, closure, my lobster clasps. So that's the necklace uh, part of the piece, and we'll do that last. But right now we're gonna go ahead and start with the, the, the main attraction, and that is the actual netting of the uh, of the crystal. So, what you want to do, and this is real simple, guys. I swear this is it, it's it's so simple. Once you get the hang of it, uh, you're gonna start flying through these. So, what you want to do is you want to separate your cord like how I have it right here, and you want to make sure on the ends they're perfectly lined up. As you see, mine aren't. So, we're gonna line it up properly and like I say you're gonna have access so I really could go ahead and just uh, and uh, you know start with my knots or whatnot but I want to show you guys the proper way and like I say you want to just get those cords pretty much even all right so you're gonna go up to your top right up here and you're gonna do an overhand knot all right and this is going to be pretty much the loop of where you're going to run your uh, your braided necklace. So what I like to do is I like to cross it like that. And see, it's going to be kind of hard for me. This is my first time doing a how-to video. So I know it's going to probably, I know I'm pretty sure I'm going to mess up. Hopefully I, I won't though. So, like I said, you're going to do an overhand knot. All right. So, once you got your, you, get, you went through with your overhand knot or whatnot, you want to kind of go up before you actually tighten up on the knot. Just to make it look a little bit better. You don't want a, a big old droopy knot or whatnot it just doesn't look proper and I'm a perfectionist guys you'll get to see this the more you watch these how-to videos and I'm gonna be doing a whole lot more of but as you see I'm I'm just tightening it up you know going through each one make sure everything's tight and this is the first part right there as you see I got an overhand knot for my loop 
much. So as you see, I have a T-pin right here and I'm using my macrame board. Now, when I first started doing this, I did not have a macrame board, but guys, this right here is such a lifesaver. Uh, when you get into like macrame, especially like the advanced pieces and things of that nature. So uh, as you see, I have it secured and I also, let me show you the back side. Oh, my cork popped off. Where's my cork? Oh, here it go. I had a piece of cork and I put it on the end right here because nine times out of 10 when I'm doing these, I'm doing them in my lap. So that's just to keep from poking myself in the lap. So if you, you know, have access to get like a little, just a little simple cork or whatnot, that'd be real, real clutch. So as you see, I have my, uh, my cord secure. Let me slide this so I can make sure you guys can see everything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate my cords right in twos. And let me see here. Now when you're doing this, you want to get them as close as possible, you know, to the to the cords that you're matching them up with or whatnot. And uh, so when you're dividing them out or whatnot, so let me see, I think this one really gonna go with that one right there. And you'll see why, like I said, um, you wanna have these cords as close as possible to the cord that you're dividing it with, because when you start tying these knots, it's just gonna make it look better. And everything will just come into play very, very nicely. Like you see that cord right there, that's pretty much real close to that one so I'm gonna use that one as a divider now matter of fact I'm gonna change that because you see this bottom core is really closer to this one so I want to make these two uh, I'm divide those two cores together and I'm gonna take these cores I'm, oops I hate when I do that this is my first time doing a how-to video and I'm pretty sure it's gonna I'm gonna make a couple mistakes but we're gonna get through it. Please trust and believe that. Okay, so as you see, I have my cords all divided, right? Like I say, you wanna get the cords that are you're dividing, you wanna make sure they're as close as possible to each other. So, um, when you're starting this right, you're gonna to wanna, to, and I'm gonna count these cords. We're gonna give them numbers just to start off, right? One, two, I'm gonna make this one, let me see. Three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, right? So, what you wanna do to start this piece off, you're gonna wanna take chords, let me see, six and seven, right? So you're gonna take these chords and you're gonna tie your first knot. And all of this is, is just overhand knots. Nothing real major, guys. Real, real simple. Now, since I'm doing this amethyst point, I know at the top is gonna be real, real small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna not take it all the way up to the top, but I wanna get it kinda close up there, right? tie your knot, make sure everything is tight, so boom, that's your first knot, right? Now, once you do that, you're just going to connect all of the, uh, well, pretty much tie overhand knots with the remaining cords or whatnot, but anytime you, and you're doing this same thing over with as you go down the piece on the cord, but you're always going to start with cord, um, was it six and seven? Those are always gonna be the first chords that you're gonna tie knots with when you begin this piece, as you go down this piece, right? And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about in just a second, guys. So, you see I have chords six and seven tied, so now I'm gonna take chord, what is this? Five and eight. I'm gonna go ahead and take these chords and I'm gonna knot them real quick. So I'm gonna slide that one over there. Like I said, just tying a simple overhand knot, guys. 
such an easy piece. But when you complete them, they, I'm talking about it just looks so beautiful. So beautiful with crystals and, and core. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying like some real, real simple components can make such a beautiful piece. So, as you see, I did a, another overhand knot with cords. I want to say that was five and eight. So I got that over there. So now I'm going to, let me see. Yeah, I'm going to take these cords right here. I want to say those are one and two. Yeah. Taking cords one and two. Same thing, overhand knot. <clears throat> Get them kind of close, like depending on the type of crystal. And once you go down the core with knots, you'll be able to start putting the crystal in just to see how it's looking and stuff like that. And what I like about this, you can play around with the color combination or whatnot. You see with the, uh, the braided necklace, I did a yellow and a purple. And I just left this straight purple or whatnot. Let me show you this right here. My brother... He gave me this color wheel. I don't know if you guys could ever find one of these. I need to ask him where he got it from. Probably any, uh, you know, craft store or whatnot. But they have these color wheels, and it's just good for, uh, if you're kind of like new to this and you don't really know about color combinations. It'll tell you about, you know, uh, co uh, complementary, split complementary, uh, color combinations, triad. Uh, tet rad, you know, and it just shows you, you know, different color combinations that you want, might want to play with. So, like I say, I'm doing just a complimentary, oh, wrong one, violet. Um, I'm doing a complimentary color scheme, so pretty much that's the yellow what I decided to use. Or I could have did a, 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 was it a triadic color scheme and it would have been green and orange with the purple. So, this is, like I say, just very good to have. If you're new and you don't really know about color schemes, right? Mm. So, you see we just did one and two. So now we're going to do three and four. Same thing, guys. Overhand knot. Get it, you know. And you want to make sure your knots are all pretty much, e you know, evenly spaced. Like, uh, not evenly spaced, but you want them at the same height. I said, it just looks better on the piece. After it's created, you know, you have all the knots in pretty much in order. So, that's our first row of knots, guys. And that, you see how it's laying out, so you wanna, we're gonna leave it in those, in that order. And like I say, the, the, we're numbering the chord. So, that's chord one, two, let's see. I'm gonna make this one three. That's four. Make this one five. This is six. I'm gonna make this one seven. We're gonna make this one eight. And I'm gonna show you why in a minute. So, like I said before, when you start this, the, your first knot going down every time because you're just repeating the same pattern, you're gonna start with chord six in chord seven. That's gonna be your first knot. So, same thing guys, overhand knot. Go up. And this part right here, it, it's really to your discretion. And like I said, it's gonna depend on the type of crystal that you're, you're netting. So I want my knots kind of close. I'm not gonna make real, real big knots. So. And as you see, that's the first knot. So we're gonna do the same process going down, guys. Okay, so like I said, you see I got uh, knots, I mean, excuse me, cords six and seven knotted. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, and it's gonna be a method to my madness, let me, Make sure I want to say is this one. Yeah, it's gonna be this one. I'm gonna take one, chord one and 
what is this, chord five, I want to say. Yep. That's how I'm going to do that. And this is actually creating the net. So, let's say you take chord one and five. And make sure you're getting it kind of parallel to that previous overhand knot you tied it or you tied earlier I say once you get it up there kind of hold it and cinch it a little bit tight so now this is where your net is actually forming up right so now I want to say this is probably chord two and three yep Chords two and three, you're gonna tie those in the knot. Like I say, you see the net. It's gonna show even better when I uh, get down to this next row. But you can already see it forming or whatnot. Kind of have that down so you can make sure you're getting on that same level as those last previous overhand knots. Tighten it up. take those two remaining chords in the back same thing guys real real simple real repetitive like I said it, it, it looks crazy but once you get your hands on it and actually do it, it it's real simple when I first started this uh, this piece it was real Real frustrating at first until I actually, like I say, you just got to get your hands on it. But that, that's how I learn things. I'm just a, a hands-on learner. So, as you see, you got your, kind of like your nets forming and whatnot. So, same thing, guys. I'm going to separate your cords in sections. And we're going to count them off. So... Count them off for you guys again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we're gonna start with the same thing. We're gonna pretty much it's just uh, the same thing. We're gonna take chords six and seven, connect those, go on down, and then after I do that row, I'm gonna actually put the crystal in to show you guys what is uh, what's it gonna look like so far. So okay, so. Starting on our third row, so of course, chords six and seven, I already tied that in the knot. So now, I'm going to take, let me see. Uh, yep, it's this one. I'm going to take chords five and four. I'm going to tie those guys in the knot. And after this run right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually side, slide the crystal in and show you guys how the nets uh, pretty much coming together and give you like a kind of idea where you should be at with your piece as far as your crystal oh excuse me so of course I, uh, like I say repetitive pattern same overhand knot now I'm going to take let me see yep chord 2 and chord 3 same thing guys, overhand knot. Scoot it up there. The rest of your knots. Tighten that up. And then you take your remaining knots. I mean excuse me, your remaining cords. And you tie those guys up. Now you, you have three rows of knots. So, like I said, what I'm going to do now, just to show you guys an idea of where you should be at and how your net should be coming out, I'm going to just go ahead and slide my crystal in. And I might flip this over and have it facing the other way. 
but I really want it like this right here. So I'm gonna just play with it a little bit. See if I can get it an idea of how I'm gonna, you know, where I'm gonna end it off. And also, like I said, if I'm gonna have it facing this way, or I'm gonna turn it upside down. And as you see, like I say, the you should see those diamond diamond showing or whatnot in your in your net, and everything should just be going properly around your piece or whatever. And see if you would have, if I would have did the knots a little bit shorter, these diamonds would have been a little bit smaller. It'd have just been more detail in it or whatnot. But like I say, this is just the idea of how it's gonna look when you finish it. To make sure you know you got it secured at the top make sure and i'll show you that at the end uh, when we end it off or whatnot but i'm going to speed up the video and uh, go ahead and finish my knots and then i'm going to show you how we end this piece off and then we're going to go into the actual necklace piece the braiding of the necklace and show you guys that on this netted uh crystal necklace of what i'm showing you guys on this beautiful wonderful manifest monday guys how to video so as you see I go ahead and I uh, I go ahead and completed the rest of the rows of the overhand knots and I'm at the point where I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and close this piece out and then my crystal will be fully netted into this uh, into this weave I did or you know this knot work so um, you're going to take all of your your cords after you get your piece cinched in and you want to make sure at the top that you know the cords are fully going around and so it's fully locked in and you know it won't slide out or anything like that so I'm sorry guys I'm trying to keep this so you can see what I'm doing so you're just gonna do another overhand knot with all of the cords all right let's scoot this up like that right there then make sure you're going all the way to the top Make sure your piece is fully uh, sensed in. Kind of push up on that. And then, like I said, like I like to do, I like to take every strand and uh, tighten it up just to make sure everything is tight. There's nothing loose. You know, I'm big on, uh, I'm big on the craftsmanship with a lot of my pieces. This is why I provide that, uh, that lifetime guarantee on all of my pieces, just to ensure all of my clients that all of my pieces, they're built to last a lifetime. So, as you see, I have that knot. It's pretty much locked in, guys. Uh, yeah, this one's pretty much locked all the way in. I don't think it's gonna slide out. You want to, like I said, just make sure it's all the way sturdy. You know. And as you see the knot work or whatnot on that piece. So, what I'm also going to do, I'm going to take it out of the T knot. Well, excuse me, the, uh, I'm going to take the, uh, the T pin out. Kind of got caught up under there. So like I said, you're going to have some access, guys, and that's no problem. Cord, cord is real, real cheap. And like I said, I just like to have that access to ensure that I'm, uh, I'm going to be at the proper length and I won't be short cord. I, I'd rather be, I'd rather have too much cord than be short cord on these pieces right here. So uh, I'm going to cut that right there, kind of like leaving like a little tassel at the end of the piece. And there you go. So that's your netted crystal, whatnot. And it's a little loose, so I'm gonna kinda like adjust it a little bit. But it's pretty much secured in there. It's not going nowhere. It's not going nowhere. Kinda like I say, you wanna adjust it just a little bit. You might have to. I think I got my knot a little bit loose. I could have made it a little bit tighter. But like I say, it's, it's secured in there. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's cinched in. So kind of like I said, just adjusting it around certain points to ensure that it's not gonna go anywhere. But yeah, it's locked in. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to the, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to do your braided part, the braided uh, necklace part of this piece. And uh, that's that's real simple. It's just simple braiding of the those three chords. And you'll pretty much fly through that. So I'm not going to go in too much detail on that part because it's pretty much self-explanatory. But like I say, you just want to make sure your piece is secure. It's not, you know, has the potential to slide out or anything like that. But as you see, this piece is pretty much secure, even though I could have made it tighter. So, but let me speed up the video a little bit. And now we're going to uh, go into the actual necklace part and uh, complete this piece. And this will be finished for um, for Manifest Monday. OK, so now for the final part of this uh, of this netted crystal necklace or whatnot. So what we're doing now, we're gonna do the braided part uh, for the necklace, right? And you see, I have my T-pin in, I have everything sensed in, so everything is tight. So it's not moving around while I'm doing this. So you see, I have three cords, and uh, you see I used uh, one purple and I used a yellow, two yellow cords or whatnot, two of the nylon cords. And uh, pretty much, it's just a simple braiding, so. I'm gonna take this cord right here. Hold on. Make sure my cords. Okay, there you go. Alright, so I'm gonna take this cord on the outside and I'm gonna go on the inside right there, go over the purple, and then I'm gonna take this yellow and go over that right there. And I'm just gonna pretty much continue doing this. Oops, it came out. And that happens sometimes. Like I say, I knew it was gonna be kinda tricking me doing this video, cause this is my first how-to video of how to make jewelry and stuff. And like I said, it's just simple braiding, guys. Just like how you would braid somebody's hair. It's like a little ponytail. And you're just gonna continue doing this right here until you get to your desired length. Now, like I say, Depending on how you want your necklaces, normally I go for anywhere in between 16 to 18 inches length as far as, uh, you know, the necklace part of this piece. So it really depends on, you know, on what you feel uh, your client might want or whatnot. You know, since I always make my jewelry ahead of time, you know, if it's not a custom, I just go to, you know, uh, a length that I think it'll fit, you know, properly on uh, anybody's chest. So, like I say, in between like 16 to 18 inches, it really depends. And this is pretty much a uh, repetitive, simplistic, pretty much just doing the same thing over and over again. And it keeps popping off, it's really kind of becoming irritating. I'm trying to get in my little rhythm. You know how you get in the rhythm, you just kind of like get in the zone. Let me, matter of fact, hold on, let me, let me put my cork back on on the other end. That might help with this or whatnot, because my cork came off. Like I said, I knew I was going to, I knew this was going to be a little task doing this video since it was my first one, but I say we're gonna get we we got through it we're pretty much at the end I say you're just doing the same thing over with all the way down to your to your land and uh, you can see when you use uh, different color cords how it would come out or whatnot so I decided to use the the yellow and the purple color on my, whoops on my cording or whatnot and uh, I'm gonna fast forward through the video so I can get it to its proper life of where I want mine. And I'll show you the end portion of how we're gonna put the crimp cords on or whatnot if you never dealt with uh, crimp cords, you know, crimping your cord or whatnot. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. I pretty much complete this piece right here, but this is pretty much done. Like I say, it's, it's a real simple piece. Why, wow, it just keeps on coming off. That's so hilarious. 
Only on YouTube, guys, you're getting the exclusive of all the bloopers. So I might have to do that one over. Because I kind of got loose on my pattern. Like I said, that happens sometimes, guys. As long as you keep your attention or whatnot, you'll be okay. Kind of don't forget where you, your brain. But I'm going to speed it up. And I'm going to show you guys the rest of this right here completed or whatnot. So. Okay, so as you see, I got my desired length of where I want my uh, necklace uh, to pretty much be at. And uh, as you see, I already folded uh, one part of my uh, crimp cord or whatever, my crimp bead. So, and they actually have tools to actually help you with your crimping or whatnot. I'm just using these right here. So, that other little flap, just gonna press down on that. And make sure it's all the way secure, all the way around, and real tight, so that you know that your, uh, your necklace or whatnot won't come out. That's pretty much secure. And you take your your scissors or your little cutters or whatnot. Cut that excess cord off or whatnot. Okay. So then what I also like to do, uh, just with those edges right there, like I said, since I'm, uh, I'm using nylon cord, I like to go ahead and, and burn those. This kind of makes it a little bit more cleaner on the ends or whatnot. Like I say it's just gonna melt down, kind of be or whatever. So as you see, we got both our ends. So now we're gonna take our netted crystal and just slide it in the loop that we already created at the top up here. Make sure it's going through all loops. And also, uh, I just wanna give this uh, this little tip as well. When you're dealing with this right here, especially like the nylon cord or any cording, you wanna make sure your hands are washed. Uh, if you're like a cigarette smoker like me or just, you know, your hands have uh, have little stains or whatever it really shows up on this uh on the light color nylon cord so always wash your hands when you're dealing with uh macrame or whatnot to make sure your pieces come out clean and uh you know all of your your lighter colors uh, are going to be bright or whatnot so always wash your hands before you do this so as you see i just slide it the uh crimp core part to the uh, split ring right here. And there you have it, guys. Um, pretty much, this is a netted crystal necklace, macrame necklace, with a beaded, I mean, excuse me, braided necklace. Like I say, it's real simplistic. It's a uh, it's bohemian, uh, boho, hippie type of style or whatever. And like I said, that's the finished product, guys. So, um, like I said, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these tutorials and how-tos on how to make certain things that I'll make as far as, uh, you know, for the uh, the business, my apothecary shop, a culture shock, LLC. So stay tuned to that. Like I said, it'll be always on Mondays, Manifest Mondays. Uh, I'll always be doing these. And, um, yeah, I got a lot more tutorials planned for you guys. So uh, any feedback, questions, concerns, comments, please feel free to, you know, comment on the uh, the YouTube channel. Or you can actually send me an email at sardavid83 at gmail.com or whatnot. And I'll respond as fast as possible. So um, thank you guys for watching today's content. Uh, Manifest Monday how-to videos of uh, day 13 of life as an entrepreneur or whatnot. So, uh, I got a lot more of these to do. Let me show you guys. Yeah, I got a lot more crystals to, to wrap. So, I'm finna get back to work. I just wanted to do this video for you guys. Uh, and I also apologize for missing last Sunday's uh, episode. It was just a lot going on. I was out of town. I really didn't have time to make any content or whatnot. So, but I'm gonna make up to you guys. And uh, probably double up on my content this uh, upcoming Sunday for the uh, vlog or whatnot. So stay tuned for that. But 
peace and greetings from Brother Divine. I hope you guys have a good day. I hope you have fun uh, trying this uh, this jury piece out. And uh, yeah, I hope I hope it I hope it does you well. Like it's been uh, been doing me as far as you know making money or whatnot. To all of the creators out there that deal in the craft of uh, in jury making and macrame or whatnot. So. I say peace and greetings to everybody, man. I hope you have high vibrations, high positivity, and high prosperity today. Peace from Brother Divine and Okoja Saga LLC, guys. <laughs>